Hi everybody, a um, bit of a delay since my last video but I've been really busy tutoring. Today's video is going to be on the nervous system. I'm going to talk about how we bring about responses to our environment. I'm going to talk about the importance of it, about the anatomy of the nerves and how you can list the different um, processes involved which bring about a response. So today we're talking about the nervous system and what is that all about? Well really all we're talking about is the fact that in our everyday life we have to respond to things in our surroundings and the nervous system is the way in which we pick up the changes in our surroundings and the nervous system brings about our response. So whether that's accidentally burning ourselves in an oven and we feel the pain and that causes our hand to move away, that's a response, that's an example of a reflex action. If it's literally just detecting that something's hot or cold, pressure, things that we taste, everything, these things all concern the nervous system. So, in order to understand what's going on, first of all we need to understand a few key words. So there are special cells which transmit the information, and we call those information nerve impulses, and the cells are called neurons. If we have lots and lots of these neurons together, then we have nerves. So, to begin with, I'm just going to talk you through the sense organs, because these are the things which pick up the change in our environment. So crucially we have our eyes, which are sensitive to light, we have our ears which are sensitive to sound and balance and that's what keeps us upright. Our nose and tongue are sensitive to chemicals that we can smell and taste in our food and our skin is sensitive to many things including pressure, temperature and pain and that's what keeps us safe. So we register that something's painful so we withdraw our hand or whatever it is away from the thing which is causing pain. So it is really important that our nervous system is working really well. So I'm going to start by talking through the pathway involved in a response. We first of all start with our stimulus, and that's really the thing that's causing us to know that something has changed in our environment. So the stimulus could be seeing something, it could be touching something hot, it could be pressure, anything really. So in this situation I'm going to say that I've, I don't know, that I've touched a warm cup of tea. Not really hot, just warm. So the stimulus is the heat from the tea. Then the next step is the receptor, and these are the receptors in my skin, in my hand, which tell me that actually, yeah, I felt something, it's temperature, it's warm. So the receptor receives that information about the warmth, and it sends it along the first neuron. And because this neuron is involved in the sensing of the stimulus, we call it the sensory neuron. That travels along and it reaches the CNS, the central nervous system, and this bit's key in sorting out our response. So the central nervous system consists of the spinal cord and the brain, and the brain's going to decide what it wants to do about it. So in this case, I'm going to decide that I want to pick up my tea. Then the information, the impulse, passes from the central nervous system down the motor neuron, which is a second type of neuron, and it passes along to the effector. Now the effector is ordinarily a muscle or a gland, so if the effector is a muscle, it will respond by contracting. So in this case, I will literally contract my muscles to pick up my tea. Or if it's a gland, then it will respond by secreting a substance or a hormone. Right, so we have gone from our motor neuron to our effector, and then that has literally brought about our response. So if we're talking about the steps involved in this whole process, we can start with our stimulus, then list our receptor, the sensory neuron, the central nervous system, the motor neuron, and the effector, and then the response. So they like asking really long um, questions about this, worth about five or six marks. But really, if you get those key words in, in order, then they're going to award you a lot of marks for using very specialist terms. And if you can add examples, so the muscle contracting, or the stimulus being the heat, um, then you'll pick up extra marks if you make it very relevant to the question being asked. But if in doubt, just list those things I just mentioned. Now there's a second type of response you need to know about, and that's the reflex arc, the, the reflex response. And this is an involuntary thing. Um, example of this could be the knee jerk reflex. So that's if you're in the doctor's and they have this tiny like hammer and they hit it on your knee and your knee jerks upwards. That's called a knee jerk. And that's because you respond without meaning to. There's no conscious input. Your body just does it for you. So it's involuntary and it's instantaneous and very fast. Um, another example could be your eye's response to bright light. So remember, if you're in very bright lights, your pupils will narrow, they'll become smaller. Why? To protect the cells in the back of your eye, the retina, from getting damaged from the sunlight or the light which is too bright. So in this case, the, this is called a pupil response. So what will happen, I'll just talk you through. The stimulus will be the really bright light. Again, you'll receive that information by the cells in your eyes. Then that passes along the sensory neuron to the 
central nervous system and this time we're interested in the relay neuron and what that does is it links together the sensory and the motor neuron so that's a really crucial difference between the reflex arc and the other pathway I was talking about. The point about a reflex arc is your conscious part of your brain is not involved. Why? Because this is an automatic response. It's not something you can control by thinking about it, which is why it's so quick. So make sure in your question, in your answer, you write the conscious part of the brain is not involved. Then the information will pass down the motor neuron as per usual. It will end at the effector, and the effector in this case could be my circular and radial muscles and they're going to cause my pupil to become narrower and therefore less light enters my eye and therefore less likely to damage the retina. So to reiterate, reflex arcs are important for keeping us safe. They're also used, for example, if you burn your hand on the oven door, just to talk you through that one, the stimulus will be the super high temperature of the oven door. That will be received by the, inf the receptors in your fingers, which will be temperature receptors that are sensitive to heat. That will pass along the sensory neuron, to your relay neuron, to your motor neuron, to the effector, which is going to be the muscle, and that's going to cause your hand to contract and pull away from the heat source, therefore keeping you safe. So I really hope you've got the difference. I'm just going to talk about the junction between two neurons. Remember two neurons, they don't just meet. There's a tiny gap between them and that's called a synapse. And luckily at this stage, all you need to know is that at the synapse, a chemical is released. It diffuses across the synapse and it binds to the neuron at the other side, the other junction, and then the electrical impulse is carried on. So it goes electrical impulse, diffusion of neurotransmitter, and then electrical impulse. So that was just a little side thought to do with synapses. Um, I'm going to do another video on hormones and chemical messaging. Um, the crucial thing you need to know about nervous system is that it's very fast, it's instantaneous, and it involves electrical impulses. It's worth taking a look at some diagrams of a sensory and motor neuron just to get an idea of what the different parts are called. I'm just going to highlight a couple of those now. There's the middle part is called the axon which transmits the electrical impulse. It's surrounded by a layer of fat. This is called the myelin sheath and what that does is that it insulates the nerve and it ensures that the impulses continue to be transmitted very very quickly. Without it you find that they go very slowly and sometimes they don't actually reach where they're going. Make sure you've had a look at where the cell body is. Um, you need to know about dendrites, but they're just the little cytoplasmic extensions. It's not too complicated, I promise. Um, I hope you found the video helpful, and I'll see you next time. Bye.